Today, we're going to learn about the artist Paul Cezanne. Can you say Cezanne? Paul Cezanne was famous for his still lifes. He painted lots and lots of still lifes. Do you know what a still life is? A still life is a painting of a thing. We just learned what a cityscape was. That was a painting of a city. Then we painted a landscape. That was a painting of land. If we painted a picture of a person, it would be called a portrait or a self-portrait. But if we paint a still life, we are painting a picture of something. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of Cezanne's famous still lifes. He painted a lot of fruit, didn't he? That was obviously one of his favorite subjects. So today, we're going to kind of copy Cezanne just a little bit, use him for some inspiration, and we're going to be making our own still life. We're going to paint a bowl of apples. Are you excited? I know I am. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before we can get started, you're going to have to get a piece of paper and a black oil pastel. I'm going to give everyone just a minute to get their piece of paper and black oil pastel. Okay, next we're going to have to write our name on our paper. So I want everyone to go ahead and write their name on their paper. And underneath your name, you need to write your teacher's initial. So say you were in Miss Parker's class. You would put a P and draw a circle around the P. So go ahead and write your name and your teacher's initial. Next, we're going to get started on our project. So we always put our name on the back. So we'll go ahead and just flip our paper over and we'll start drawing our still life. So remember, a still life is a picture of something. It's not a person, it's not a place, it's a thing. And today, we are going to be drawing some apples. So we'll just start off and draw three or four circles towards the middle of our paper can go ahead and draw them in black oil pastel and they do not have to be perfect. Go ahead and draw yourself three or four circles towards the middle of your paper. Okay, next we're going to add a place for the stem to grow from. So we're just going to put a little U shape and a line and that's going to be our stem on each of our apples so somewhere on each apple i want you to add a u shape and then a line for your stem okay when that step's finished you're going to draw the plate that your apples are sitting on. You could draw a big circle or a big square or a big triangle, but whatever shape you're gonna draw, go ahead and draw your plate. It should go around the outside edge of all the apples. I'm gonna draw a circle. Okay, you can go ahead and draw your plate.
And our final step is going to be to add some kind of designs for our tablecloth. So we could leave our tablecloth plain. Or we could put some stripes. We could do horizontal stripes going across the page long ways or vertical stripes or both. I may use some diagonal lines. I think I'll use a few diagonal lines. And that makes a nice design for the tablecloth that my apples are sitting on. So you can go ahead and think about what style of line you might want to use and design your tablecloth. Alright boys and girls, the next thing we're going to do is get our materials. So if you are a materials one or two person, you need to go get one set of paint. If you are a brush washer, you can go get one set of brushes for your table. Go ahead and get the materials you're supposed to get. Remember, if you're a materials one or two person, you get one set of paint each. If you're a brush washer, you get a set of brushes and you put a little bit of water in the bottom and you bring it back to your table. Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our apples. Um, painting the apples is going to be really fun and easy since we're using watercolors. We have to get the paints wet first. So the first step is just to dip your brush in some water, just like this, and just kind of swirl it around a little bit to get it nice and wet. We are going to add either red or green on one side of all of our apples. This is gonna make the shadow to make our apples look like they're round. So to get the red started, I just get a nice little puddle of red by dipping my brush in the red. And I'm gonna put a stripe of red at the bottom of two of my apples and maybe I'll do some green on one apple. So I'm gonna put one stripe of red on the bottom of these two apples on the same side and then I'll put, clean my brush out, I'll get my green started, and I'll put one stripe of green, and this is gonna be the darkest part on our apples. I want you guys to go ahead and add a stripe of red or a stripe of green to each apple. Okay, next we're gonna go back and fill in the rest of the apple with yellow. So to get the yellow going, I'm gonna do the same thing. I just keep dipping my brush in water and swirling it around in the yellow paint until I make a nice puddle of yellow paint that I can work from. Then I'm gonna come back in, I'll start with my red apples and I'm gonna fill in with some yellow. When I start touching the red, my paint's gonna start spreading out and hopefully I'm going to get a nice fade from a dark red to a nice yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow starting on the opposite side from where my red stripe is and then working back until I meet that stripe and then almost bringing that red up just a little bit to make it look like it's blended from red to orange to yellow. 
I'm going to wash my brush out before I go to my green apple and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add some yellow to the top. Keep painting with yellow until I meet the green line and then almost brush back just a little bit to pull some of that green into the rest of the apple. You can go ahead and add yellow to all your apples now. Okay, after we have our apples painted, these look really good. They fade from a dark color to a light color, so it helps make them look round. Our next step is going to be to paint our plate. You need to pick one solid color to paint your plate, and I would probably not pick green, yellow, or red because we've already used those colors, and we want our apples to stand out. So I'm going to pick purple. I'm going to get my purple paint ready just by dipping my brush in water, swirling it around, and then I'm going to paint my plate. Be really careful around the edges. I'll probably paint the edges first, the edges of the apples and the edges of the plate. After I have my edges painted, I can go ahead and fill in these bigger areas with some more purple paint. So, I realize I did that last step really fast. I want you guys just to watch these last two steps and then you can finish after I'm finished at your own pace. So we just got the plate painted and remember the strategy was to paint the edges of the shapes first and then fill in the big spots. Our only thing left is our tablecloth, which we can have a lot of fun with the tablecloth trying to mix colors, um, or we could just keep it a solid color. I think I'll do just a little bit of color mixing, and I'm going to pick a color that is different from purple because I want my purple plate to stand out on my tablecloth, just like I wanted my apples to stand out. So I may do kind of an orange and yellow tablecloth because yellow is the color that's directly across the color wheel from purple, so that makes them complementary. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself some yellow paint going. I have to dip my brush in water, get it wet, and then make a puddle of paint. And I'll just start in the middle. Go ahead and paint this first middle stripe with some yellow. Then I'll come over to the sides and paint another stripe yellow, skipping a space for another color. Okay, if I want to mix anything with my yellow, now's the time. So I can look at my paint set and see that green is next to yellow and so is orange. So either one of those two would mix in well. I think I'll go with some green. So I'll get the green going. And I'll just brush a little green on top of my yellow. Now I'm going to add a bit more yellow. Okay, now I have to choose a color for my other stripes, so I think I'll start with orange. And I can leave these stripes just orange, or I can mix in some red or some yellow. I think I'll mix a little red. All right, boys and girls. So we just finished painting our plate of apples. When we paint things like this, not people or places, but things, what do we call this kind of painting? Can anyone remember? That's right, it's called a still life. So I think you guys did a really good job on your still lifes. I can't wait to see how your plates and your stripes turn out. When you finish, you can put your project on the drying rack and you can get one piece of free draw paper after you've put away all your materials. Alright, I hope you have fun!